Um, could you please introduce yourself and tell us about your organization? Yes, happy to. My name is Hans van Dam. I'm of, uh, one of the founders at Conversation Design Institute. And uh, what we do is uh, really skill up people. So we teach them conversation design skills and we have a whole certification program around that. So enterprises that are building a conversational AI capability, they're setting up teams. Uh, then they try to figure out, you know, who's going to be working there, what's the skill set that they need for that. And then they call us and, and that's when CDI comes in. What key issues were you looking to address by founding the Conversation Design Institute? I always wanted to be a writer. And I was interested in writing dialogues and writing fiction. And I became a copywriter and I worked up a, at a startup incubator. And my first startup didn't really work out. So I ended up working in customer service. And when I saw customer service being automated, I, I really saw everybody struggle with that. Nobody really knew how to write dialogue. And the problem that we saw that we uh, that we're solving right now is on one hand, you have all these enterprises that simply do not really know how to design conversations. Uh, but at the same time, you also have these conversational AI technology companies that really want to you know, activate their customer base and help them get more value from the technology. So that kind of launched the idea. And we said in a world where everybody is selling hammers, we're the only ones training carpenters. Why is a human-centric mindset so important when designing automa automated conversations? I think what, what's so cool about conversational AI is that a lot of enterprises, on one hand, we have automation goals and we have experience goals. And they seem opposites of each other. They seem in conflict, but actually conversational AI and, and language interfaces allow us to unify these business goals where we're focusing on reducing costs to automation and increasing the experience by talking to people in a proper way. And, you know, Language is so intimate to people. Even our thoughts are in language most of the time. And they're a very important part of who we are as people. And it, it really shapes our identity. If I ask you to describe yourself, you're going to use language. So it's so important for, for people's existence. So when we use language to talk to people in an automated way, we need to get that right. This is the customer relationship. So when somebody reaches out with a question and a concern, you know, they're not just asking, you know, uh, I'm shut out of my bank accounts. You know, that's the question, but there's a whole story behind that. Maybe now they can't pay rent or they can't buy groceries or maybe they can't get their loved one a gift. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's going on there and we need to recognize that as creators because otherwise we just build cold machines. So yeah, if, language interfaces become more important, then we really need to understand and respect the impact that these language interfaces have on people. What are your top three conversation design tips for creating customer-centric chats? Before you create anything, you want to mentalize the context of the conversation. So you really want to think deeply about what this conversation means for the other person. So where are they likely to be? Who are they with? Are they in a rush or do they have all the time in the world? Uh, what are they worried about? You know, what motivates them to reach out? What do they expect from this conversation? We wanna really understand all those things that are happening in this conversation. So mentalize the context of the conversation. I think that's like the key step before you create anything. And then it's to actually have the conversation. If you're creating something for a chatbot, say it out loud role play it, do improvisational theater, or when you write something, just say it out loud. And if it sounds bad, it's probably not very good. So mentalize the conversation, have the conversation, and then validate it. Make it inclusive by testing it out with a bunch of people. Uh, we like to use the Wizard of Oz test. So uh, what it pretty much means is you, you write your first draft, your script, you stick to that script and other people can speak freely. And then you kind of discover how well your design holds up um, so mentalize the conversation have the conversation and then make it inclusive through wizard of Oz testing i think those three steps are, are key if we're then looking at you know very practical things uh one breath test if you can't say it in one breath it's probably too long you want to shorten it uh, always end with a clear prompt and one very simple hack whenever you create anything just look for the words I and me and us and we and see if you can rewrite that to you. So instead of 
how can I help you? What would you like help with? And all those things make it more human centric. What direction do you see the field of conversation design going in over the coming years? Yeah, it's, you know, what is conversation design going to be a couple of years from now? It's probably very different, right? Now, if you would say AI is maybe 10% and 90% of it actually hard labor, labor of creating these conversations, it's probably going to change that balance. It's going to shift. And I think conversation designers ultimately are going to have more a configuring role. So you're configuring the systems and setting the parameters. You're thinking about the tone of voice. You're thinking about the use cases. But you're maybe not necessarily doing all the actual writing of the conversations. How do you reassure CX leaders that automating their support won't dehumanize the customer care they provide? Yeah. Uh, I always love this question, like, aren't we dehumanizing it? I think, like, if you have 100 agents, uh, a few of them are sometimes also saying things you might not agree with. I think if you really focus on human-centric and inclusive design and you really figure out what that conversation can be and you do it well, then you can use it a million times, right? So I think you're not dehumanizing it at all. You're helping people get the help they want as fast as possible with great respect in a human-centric way. And of course, you always have agents helping out. What is your number one tip for supercharging CX? Yeah, so supercharging CX, I think, is about you know creating a conversational mindset in the entire organization. And I think the way to do that is to build a small team of people that really own the chatbot. So don't just create a chatbot and, and forget about it, but really create a, a small group of pioneers that go out and they play around with it. And you know they take those 10 pain points, key use cases that every organization has, and they really work on it. They really mentalize what's going on. They do the research. They talk to customers. They role play these conversations, and they really nail them. They really figure out how to solve these problems. And I think what you're going to see then is that customers appreciate it, you know, because they get the help they need uh, that they want, and they have a good experience. But more importantly, probably even, is that internally, you now have a story to tell. You can say we solved this problem and this is how we did it. And you're going to see more managers and business owners be interested now in conversational AI. So you're going to grow budgets and everybody's going to be on board. And you kind of grow from like a small group of pioneers to a conversational mindset. And I think once you start doing that, then you're supercharging your entire customer experience across the board because you're going to be omnipresent. You're going to be everywhere talking to everyone in a proper way. Which current CX trend is here to stay? Uh, it's conversations. I think that's that's the main thing. If we if we look at customer experience, you know, we've got chatbots, you've got voice applications. Soon you'll have the metaverse. But at the end of the day, it's about crafting conversations in a personalized and contextual way.